How does our curriculum influence retention? How does scheduling influence it? We've been talking a great deal about retention lately. Phil Hunt and Jeff Boyer have helped me understand the influence of our curricula and scheduling on retention. Phil is the registrar for North Dakota State University. President Cook recently asked him to serve as a special assistant for retention. He's co-chair with Carrie Ann Platt of the President's Council on Retention. Jeff is the Director of Assessment and Accreditation for the University. He spent a great deal of time looking at data associated with retention. Jeff and Phil suggest that we need to pay attention to the number of credits in our programs, prerequisites, electives, bottlenecks, and course sequencing. Phil also encourages us to pay attention to an issue in our curriculum that he calls toxic combinations. What's your advice to faculty about what they can do in their curricula to make it a, a better experience for students? You know, what are those things that, uh, that impact retention, right? Well, curriculum, primary, and there's a lot that goes into that. And so I'm gonna put up my nice little framework here. There's a lot that goes into curriculum here. You know, this, this thing can go on forever, right? Um, course outcomes, degree velocity, sequencing, degree complexity, scheduling. The curriculum is how our students experience their education, right? The classroom academic education at NDSU. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to interrogate a mm -hmm. curriculum? That sounds kind of scary, mm -hmm. like something you would see on CSI. <laughs> right. So I use that term interrogate very purposely when talking about interrogating the curriculum because it catches people a little off guard so it really draws attention to it and it's at, at the most basic level it really means like question the curriculum you know if you're going to interrogate someone you're going to question and so it means ask ask the question why why is this so why is this curriculum structured the way that it is does it set students up for success what are the pathways that students have to navigate within this curriculum and are they are they necessary so it's really about uh, when, when I say interrogating it's like questioning why are the prerequisites the way that they are you know why are these required courses required um, how many electives uh, free electives truly free electives are are built into a curriculum, and if there aren't many, why? So as we're interrogating, yep. if you could talk a little bit about curriculum complexity yep. and bottlenecks. Yep. They're, they're, they're not quite the same thing. But, but they're definitely related. So this idea of curricular complexity is the, the, the more complex the curriculum, the more challenging it can be for students to actually navigate that. So a higher curricular complexity you know, increases the time to degree on bottleneck where students are getting stuck. You know, that, that, that's a course with high DFW rates. It's not taught, uh, you know, it's not scheduled that's in, in, a, in a manner that allows students to get it when they need it, that sort of thing. And so those bottlenecks are, are really problematic because they delay student progress and, and that they are likely the point when we're going to lose a student. So pay attention to your curriculum, look at your curriculum, ask, you know, how many courses do we really need within our degree program? And then how do they build off of one another? We have certain prerequisites and co-requisites. Do you need to have this prereq course is it really building upon the knowledge that's needed for that next subsequent course? And if the answer is no, then why are they attached as a, as a prereq? The, the factors that affect curricular complexity are having really long prerequisite chains. And some of our programs on campus have, have uh, chains of five, six, seven, and in, in even eight courses. Uh, so that that really locks students into this 
pathway and and then so if students get off that pathway fail a course course isn't available uh, that really can be challenging students so it certainly extends their time or or um, or they don't actually even are, aren't able to, to complete that degree so from a, reg a purely registrar standpoint you know I look at our curriculum um, and I see we have a number of degree programs that have more than 120 credits. I think in some ways we are an outlier in the number of total degree credits. And I also think that we have to be more mindful in how we're offering our courses. I think you heard me talk about sequencing, mm -hmm. right? When are we offering certain courses, okay? Is the way that we are offering them, that sequencing, is that creating unintended barriers or hardships for students? Toxic combinations. And that's when, you, let's say you have a one class course that's high in DFWs, offered at the same time as another course high in DFWs within your curriculum. Is that really benefiting students? You know, I would just say we're, we're all in this together. You know, and, I, and, and there, there are going to be some, I wouldn't even call them hard conversations. There, got, there need to be some honest conversations, some thoughtful conversations, some strategic conversations. And we may not all agree in the beginning on how to define or interpret something, but we all should be working towards this one goal, and that is to improve retention in the student experience at NDSU. And there are a number of ways in which we can do that that cost no money, but they're gonna cost time, energy and thoughtfulness and I believe we've got a great team of folks on this campus and around campus to help us meet the needs of our students and meet the goals and the priorities that the president the state board has set for us and frankly our students and our parents expect of us I hope we take seriously Jeff's invitation to interrogate our curricula this will require us to pay attention to number of credits, prerequisites, especially prerequisite chains, the availability of free electives, curriculum complexity, bottlenecks, toxic combinations, and scheduling, especially sequencing of courses, Take care.